you are not permitted to live here the same way you came. A positive change will take place in your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Amen. We are going to lift up our voice. Lord, my own word, the very word you have prepared for me in this encounter with destiny, let my own word come. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. My own word, you are prepared for me. The very word you have prepared for my turnaround that will give my destiny a forceful push, a forceful change, a dramatic turnaround. Lord, let my own word come. Let my own word come. The very word prepared for me, Spirit of God, let my own word be delivered to me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I look forward to receive my own encounter. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. After this encounter, you will no longer be found on the floor. Amen. After this encounter, your position will change to the top. Amen. That amen is not strong enough. Amen. And whatever has been keeping you on the same spot, they will let you go by force. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together for the Lord. And please take your seat. God bless you. In this Encounter with Destiny series, I'll be taking the first teaching this morning on, my way, on the way to your high places. On the way to your high places. By predestination, you are not ordained to occupy the low places of life, but the high places of life. Scripture said you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. So your portion in destiny is at the top, not at the bottom. Even though this is your ordained destiny, there is what you must do to get there. Every blessing of the kingdom is not wished. You don't wish it and get it. You consciously engage yourself with things that will enable you get to where God has prepared for you. Don't forget God still has you in mind, for I know the plan that I think towards you, thought of good and not of evil, to give you a future, a hope and an expected end. And that's why this teaching will be centering this morning you must engage the power of kingdom first lifestyle. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. The first thing we'll be asking ourselves this morning is, what is lifestyle? Because understanding what lifestyle is will give us a picture of where we are going. That's what lifestyle represents what we call trademark. Trademark means what you are known for. There is what each and every one of us here is known for. You can be known for good and you can also be known for bad. That's what lifestyle also talks about identity. Identity. 
you are cheaply identified by your acts by your traits, by your actions. It is easy to identify someone just by reason of what he did. They don't need to know who is, what's the name of the person. Just know who did it. But this morning, I'll be quick to let you know the place you find yourself determines your lifestyle. The place you find yourself. Let me break it down. Let's say now, this brother has been with us in Lafia. All of a sudden now, he now got visa and traveled to U.S. He didn't even stay one year. He only stayed three months. And as he came back, he's talking on from his nose. Now, where he found himself has influenced how he is talking. Am I saying something to somebody? So, places determines lifestyle. Likewise, people that you find yourself influence your lifestyle positively. My friend traveled with his family to U.S. for Christmas holiday alongside to make preparation for the wife that is to deliver their baby. As they travel, you know, the eating condition will change. They started eating grass. You know what I mean by grass. So when they came back, the first week they came back, they descended on Pounderiam. Come and see Pudgeon. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, eating cabbage, carrots, is a normal lifestyle over there. But it's not a normal lifestyle here. Am I saying the truth? So in a bid to change quickly, they landed in the hospital. Are you, are you catching the picture? Places determine lifestyle. People also influences lifestyle. The moment you are in a place, also in the midst of a people, gradually, unconsciously, there is what we call adaptation. You begin to adapt. You begin to conform to their lifestyle. That's why Romans chapter 12, if we read, take it from verse 2, it said, Do not therefore be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can't be in this kingdom and be living a contrary lifestyle. It's a sign that you don't belong here. You don't belong here. So where you find yourself determines your lifestyle. And very easy, lifestyle are products of daily habits. We are breaking it down. Just follow me as we are going. Lifestyle is a product of daily habits. Mike Mudok said, what you do daily determines what you become ultimately. What you do daily. What you do daily does not require pressure. What you do daily does not require announcement. You do it with ease. You do it with ease. Lifestyle is a product of habits. And your habits... Determine what you do willingly, choicefully, 
delightsomely, cheerfully, no struggle. Your habits. Let me give you a very simple example. An addicted smoker does not need your approval to determine how many sticks of cigarette he will take in the morning as he's going to the toilet. Am I saying the truth? He doesn't need your approval. He doesn't need your recommendation. He doesn't need your commendation. This thing you are doing is bad. This is his lifestyle. So as he's going to the toilet 6 a.m. in the morning, he will carry six sticks of cigarette. cigarette. Whether he's pooping or he's not pooping, he's smoking the cigarette. Am I saying something to somebody? To him, the cigarette is the pooping. So he can be there. Who is there now? Come out quick. You know, no, say somebody there inside. Are you understanding what I'm saying, huh? To him, he doesn't feel bothered whether you are pressed or you are not pressed. As far as he's there satisfying his desire, he's fulfilling his aim. He's fulfilling his, he's fulfilling his mission. So, habits are things you do choicefully, delightsomely, without any pressure from anyone or from anybody. But do you know what? Your habits now give you a permanent character. Your habits gives you what? A permanent character. That word habit is gotten from what we call habitat. Habitat talks about environment. Fish, fish, they live successfully in water. Am I saying the truth? Pick a fish out of the water, place him on land, you are discomforting the fish. Making life unbearable for the fish. Am I saying the truth? Birds, they find themselves glide through the air. Why? That is their natural habitat. It is easy for them to soar. It's easy for them to fly to any environment. Why? That is their habitat. I want you to know this morning that your habits and your character is what defines your placement in life. God cannot keep you in a place where your character cannot sustain you. Everyone wants to get to his high place. But the amazing truth still remains. Where your character cannot sustain you, God cannot keep you there. So it's not a question of, Satan, I bind you. You household wickedness, I curse you. You are praying mumu prayer. God cannot keep you where your character cannot sustain you. It is one thing to desire to get to your high place, but you need to start now to build a habit and form the character that will keep you there. I might say something to somebody. So it's not what you wish. It's what you do daily. What you do daily, you are preparing for your place. God will not keep you. In case you forget any other thing, don't forget this one. Where your character cannot sustain you. And as far as this kingdom is concerned, people that are on their way to their high place, which God has prepared for them, let's read this scripture, Exodus 23, verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place I have prepared for you. There is a place prepared for you. There is a place prepared for you. 
I say again, there is a place prepared for you. But if you must assess that place, one of the vital things you need is the kingdom first lifestyle. What is the kingdom first lifestyle? We have looked at what lifestyle is. We have been able to know what habits is. We have now known what character is. Now we are looking at what is kingdom first lifestyle. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. But look at it. Both in the kingdom and outside the kingdom, we have people that are seeking distance. They are not seeking first the kingdom of God. I had Papa say this some years back. You don't get good by pursuing good. You get good by pursuing God. You don't get good by pursuing good. You get good by pursuing God. When you pursue God, good will pursue you. When you pursue God, what others are dying to get, pressing to get, will be assessing you cheaply. But seek you first the kingdom of God. There is what you need to do that will determine the next things of your life. That is why a wise man said, what you do first determines the rest. So you must choose that first thing that will determine the rest. Let's take a very simple example now. Now in your list, I need a job. I want to marry. I want to buy a car. I want to build a house. All those are good desires. Am I saying the truth? But which one will come first? Somebody say house. Somebody say what? Now when you get job, money will come. You will get a house. When, when you get a house, the next thing, you will marry. Am I saying the truth? When you marry, the next thing, you will get a car. There is one thing that you must do first that will determine the rest. Now if you can understand this one, it is cheap for you to understand this one. Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. I have not said to the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. God is not a user of men, but rather he places men. How you seek him will determine how he will place you. You shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with the whole of your heart. Not with a crafty heart. Not with a cunning heart. He say, catch the crafty in their craftiness. No, ma no matter how crafty you are, <laughs> you are still in the hand of God. Seek ye first, not seek ye last. Not seek ye middle. Not seek ye second. Seek ye what? First. Kingdom first lifestyle is a lifestyle of priority. Where you place God will determine where he will place you. You can't place the kingdom first and end up last on every issue of life. If it has worked for others, then get ready, it must work for you. It's a lifelong principle. It's not an occasional principle. It's a lifelong principle that must work. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So when seeking the goodwill of the kingdom becomes your priority, going forward in life becomes cheap. Making progress is no longer with a struggle. Experiencing success is no longer with sweat. Why? You are seeking first. Tell your neighbor, seek first. So all the people that enjoyed placement in God, they had one trademark, God first. God first. So they are seeking God first. David said, a day I spend in your courts is more than a thousand years outside. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. A day, a day, a day, first, first. A day I spend in your courts. Oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longed for thee. My flesh tested after thee. To see thy power. As I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Seek God first. But do you know what? If you must make this kingdom first lifestyle a priority, it must be with a covenant. If it is not with a covenant, one situation can just knock you out. Let's take a classic look at what happened in Second Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15, let's take it from verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Odeth, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. If you seek him, he will be found of you, but if you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. God is not looking for you. You are the one that will look for him. Now look at verse 3. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those days, and in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, none to him that came in. But great vexation was upon all the inhabitants of the country. And nations were destroyed of nation and city of city. For God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hearts be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words, the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away all, and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the city which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord which was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and all the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifth, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa, and they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoils which they had brought seven thousand seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. Look at verse twelve now. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul. That whosoever will not seek the Lord, God of Israel, should be put to death. Whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord 
with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their hearts and sought him with their whole desire. And it was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. Do you know why they entered into a covenant? They did not want a repetition of the suffering. You can be a Christian and be suffering. You can be coming to church and be identified with permanent hardship. Why? Your serving God is not with a covenant. They were without the law and without the teaching priest. Meaning they were careless, doing things the way they wanted without instruction. They didn't want to live by the principle. They didn't want to live by the covenant. Just as you are in a church now, in every church you have people that do not belong to any service unit. Their own is just to come for first service or come to second service and go their way. Which service do you belong? First service. Which service do you belong? Third service. I don't want anybody to know me, but problem will know you. The day problem will know you, you will know church. The day problem will know you, you will know pastor's office. The day problem will know you, you will know prayer meeting. When is your Monday prayer? I want to start coming. What has happened? Pastor, the, the thing I'm seeing now, eh? It needs serious prayer. When someone tells you the thing needs serious prayer, is no longer seen in the physical again. The attack is now through dreams. Am I saying something to somebody? They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord. With the whole of their heart. Not with the whole of their head. With the whole of their heart. Hear me? If your heart is not involved, God is not there. If your heart is not involved. That's why God himself said, my son, give me your heart. My son, do what? Your heart. It is your heart that defines the quality of your seeking God. Not where you are serving. You can be in sanctuary. You can be in CCU. You can be in prayer band. You can be in protocol. But your heart. Bishop Abiyo said, activity is not equal productivity. There are people that are even in three units. They are active. No result. Activity is not equal to what? Productivity. Why? The heart. My son. Give me your heart. Not your head. It's your heart that I need. So when your heart is at work, things will work well. When your heart is at work, things will begin to work well. It is with our heart we initiate the covenant of service. The covenant lifestyle is initiated by the heart. And the heart defines your followership. I want you to know this. People that have made up their mind for the kingdom first lifestyle, they know what they get. If you don't know what I am getting, you will not be committed like me. You will not be pursuing this thing like me. I am not serving God because I am a pastor. I have been serving him before I became a pastor. So it is not the title that makes my commitment. It is my heart. Are there no pastors other places that are begging everywhere? Is there anything to lay at the apostles' feet? Is there anything for man of God? Have we not heard of such? There are plenty of such. So it's not the title. It is the heart. I want to say to someone here this morning, seeking and serving God does not only pays the best, it pays the unmatchable. What you get from serving cannot be compared, it cannot be equal to anything you can think about. 
So serving God pays not just the best, the unmatchable. In any big organization you can think of, hear me and hear me where, they keep paying you as far as you are still relevant. The day you stop being relevant, they stop paying you. In fact, the moment they know that something is wrong with you, they begin to prepare someone that will take your place. But here, God does not only pay us with blessing. He pays us with cash. He's also servicing our heads. Whether you are working in an oil company, the moment your heads break down, they look for your replacement quick, quick. What they will do is they will give you sick leave. They will tell, they give you sick leave. But there's no sick leave here. Am I saying something to somebody? You shall serve the Lord and he shall bless your bread and your water and take away sickness from the midst of thee. But the moment you are sick in a bank, sick in an oil company, they give you what they call sick leave. If you are sick leave past three months, I think that you need to start preparing for someone to replace him. It's as simple as that. Serving God pays the unmatchable. Papa said something two years ago. No one can pay me the way God is paying me. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure. Which means how you will end has already been defined. When you are serving God, how you will end is already defined. You will not end in sick bed. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in what? Pleasure. Not in tension. Not in pressure. Billy Graham was the only person that gave his life to Christ on the day of the crusade. He was the only one, and he said, Lord, for this thing you have done to me, I will bring many to the kingdom. He died a blessed man, a joyous man, a happy man. How many of us know the age of Kenneth Copeland? What? 80 what? Now, how many of us know Kenneth Copeland is still flying his jet? He's not assistant pilot. He's the chief pilot of his jet. I hope you know, for you to fly every year, you must go for renewal training and course. Not that I've been flying for the past 20 years. There is nothing there to learn. He must go back to relearn and to remain current, to still be flying. His mates in the village, I hope you know, some of them are not coming outside. Some of them cannot stand straight. Some of them cannot start 30 minutes without their leg doing like this. I might say something to somebody. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure. So serving God pays the best. So every time we are serving the interest of the kingdom, God gives to us what we cannot give to ourselves. God favors us beyond our ability. God gives us help that is beyond our might. In fact, when serving God becomes your delight, you enter the realm of sweatless blessings, sweatless breakthroughs, sweatless open doors. No wonder Joshua said, Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. As for me and my house, 
We will serve what? Before he made that declaration open, he has seen something. You don't make open declaration without inner confirmation. There must have been some inner confirmation that must have been going on before he voiced out. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. As for me and my house, we will do what? Serve the Lord. So when serving God becomes a delight, everything about you change. Now, do you know that serving God is an attitude? It's an attitude. I just feel like doing something. I just feel like doing something for the Lord. It's an attitude. It influences your behavior. It influences your action. It influences your look. It influences your going out and your coming in. It influences your steps. Why? You know what you are getting. One of my pastor friends said something and I found that to be true. I don't have grace to do what I will not be rewarded for. Anyone you see putting energy, putting spirit, putting his body, putting his soul, there is something he's getting. I said there is something he's getting. He's not getting the normal thing, he's getting the unusual thing. He's getting something that is extraordinary. Something that is not common. So if you want to enter the realm of noiseless breakthrough, you need to redefine your commitment. You need to redefine your interest in serving God. If what you have been getting is not what you really liked, change what you are doing. Bishop Abiyo said, until you stop doing what you were doing, you will not get what you are supposed to get. And until you start doing what you are supposed to do, you will not get what you are supposed to get. Choose. What do you need to stop? And what do you need to start doing for things to change? You know it. Nobody needs to tell you. You don't need to be in the dream for you to see it. You already know it. Seeking the goodwill of the kingdom as a kingdom lifestyle priority brings us to the realm of favor without limits. Tell your neighbor, favor without limits. Let's confirm this from scriptures. Nehemiah chapter 1, as we read verse 4. Nehemiah chapter 1. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Now look at, let's continue now, verse 5. And he said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandment. Verse 6. Let thy ear now be attentive and thy eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. Verse 7 We have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the status, nor the judgment, which thou hast commanded thy servant Moses. Verse 8. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter ye abroad among the nations. Verse 9. But if ye turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though there were of you cast out, Unto the uttermost part of the heavens, yet will I gather them from thence and bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name. Now these are the servants. Now these are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. Verse 11 now. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thy ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of their servants 
who desire to fear thy name and prosper, I pray thee, thy servant, this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cobbearer. Look at verse chapter 2. Let's just read verse 9. Chapter 2, verse 9. Then I came to the governor beyond the river and gave him the king's letter. Now the king has sent captains of the army and horsemen. Now, Nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 14. Chapter 5 and verse 14. Nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 14. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year, even unto the 2 and 30th year of Atasasis, the king, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. Why? God was supplying. God was favoring them. The things they needed, they were getting it. Even though there were oppositions, but they could not stop them. Why? The good hand of the Lord. The good hand of the Lord. Every time you are on the right course, pursuing the kingdom course, you enjoy the good hand of the Lord. You enjoy favor from God. He said the good hand of God was upon us. Why? We made up our mind to arise and rebuild the broken walls of Jerusalem. They made up their mind so God was with them. Prospering them. Helping them. Supplying every needs that came their way. So before a need will arise, supply will meet them. Before a need will arise, supply will meet them. I want to let you know, beginning from today, you will not beg for bread. Amen. You will not look for what to eat. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Even David confirmed this. He says, since I was born, now I'm getting old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children beg bread. He said, the young lion may suffer for what? But they that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Any. That word, any, means any. Shall not lack any good thing. What is the good thing you are looking for? God said you will not lack it. I say you will not lack it. Do you know why you will not lack it? There is a difference between the choosing and living thing. Scripture says he opened his hand wide and satisfied the desire of every living thing. You are more than a living thing. Blessed is the man whom thou chooseth and causeth to approach unto his throne. You are more than a living thing. A living thing includes a goat. Are you a goat? A living thing includes a fowl. He opened his hand wide and satisfied the desire of every living thing. So if he opens his hand wide and satisfies the desire of every, every living thing, hear me, you are not permitted to beg for bread. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. amen. That's why you must be sure of what the future holds for you. When you are sure of what the future holds for you, serving God will no longer be a struggle. You are struggling in serving God because you are thinking that you, you will need to struggle to get things. You will need to struggle to get things. You will need to struggle to open your door. No! Seek ye first. Likewise, the kingdom first lifestyle opens us to what we call the realm of generational blessings. Generational blessings. How many of us desire generational blessings? Are you sure? Now let's take a look at scripture. Psalm 1-1. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. That delight what? 
that delighted greatly in his what? Look at verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be what? He said, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endure it forever. My children can never be poor. Lie, lie. My children, children, children can never be poor. Make your choice. Don't say amen for me. Say amen. Yo. Say your amen. <laughs> My children can never be poor. He delighted greatly in doing his commandments. Therefore, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be what? Blessed. He said, wealth and riches shall be what? In his house. And his righteousness endured forever. You cannot be poor. Your children cannot be poor. Your children, children cannot be poor. Yeah. Scripture say a good man liveth an inheritance for his what? Children, children. A good man. A good man. Are you a bad man? A good man liveth. Some people when they die, they leave death. Am I saying the truth? They leave what? Death. So when the debtors come, the first thing they do, the father was owing us, so we have come to sell this house so that we can recover our money. So we are giving you seven days, everybody to pack out. Hey, you know, tell us, oh, hey, man, I waste money, huh? Hey, it's not like that. But a good man leave it an inheritance for his children. Children. You will leave good things for your children. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Now let me tell you this now. What you do now will determine what they will eat tomorrow. So if you like, play with it. What you are doing now will determine what your children will see tomorrow. If you serve God casually, they will suffer casually. What we are doing now is defining what we live for them tomorrow. You either leave a legacy for them or you leave a liability for them. Choose one. You either leave a legacy for your children or you leave a liability for them. You leave them with concern. You leave them with trouble. But scripture says a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children, children. How did he leave it? He's defining his service. And God is rewarding his service. Rewarding his commitment. So, what you are doing now is not just all about you. But all about your children, children. So, what you are doing now is not what you will eat, you and your wife and children. It is the ones that will come after them. The ones that will come after them. So, if you desire your children, children to suffer, be casual in your approach in serving God. But if you don't want them to test shame, you must be zealous. Tell your neighbor, zealous. You must be zealous in serving God. You must be delicately committed. So, serving God with the whole of your heart brings your generation to a lifetime of endless blessings. He delighted greatly in his commandments. Therefore, God said, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He said, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endure it forever. So when you see this, if it is time to serve, you not say, no, I'm not ready today. Let me relax. No! What we, what we do today secures tomorrow. What we do today ensures tomorrow. What we do today buys the future. 
How many of us have seen the book by Dr. Mentor, Mensa Otabe? By the future. Hey. Only one person. Only two. My God. Three. Trouble deal. Now, should I tell you this? Anywhere you see that book, forget any other thing you want to buy. Buy it. The name of the book is Buy the Future. The future you will, you will see in your next five years. Some people are already securing their own today. Buy the future. Secure your future by reason of what you are doing now. There is no accidental future anywhere. The future we are talking about is what we are doing consciously today to enter tomorrow. And one of the things we need to do to enter it is to give ourselves wholeheartedly for service. And lastly, serving God with a kingdom first mentality or a lifestyle gives us an open choice of whatsoever. Whatsoever you desire. There is a realm you come into that is the realm of whatsoever. Choose anything you want. Now, if you go for a buffet party, are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's not the one that someone will stand by one side, bring your plate, bring your plate, let me put for you. You say, no, na buffet, I want to take by myself. You say, no, I must put for you. <laughs> there are some parties like that. But in a real buffet party, nobody determines what you take. I want to take sausage. I want to take fried meat. I want to take puff puff. Another person says, I want to take chicken. I want to take jello fries. I want to take a uh, uh, chop and die. <laughs> Do you know why? It is free. Whatsoever. Some people, they will, when they go to a buffet like this, they say, make one of the go first, make one of the go first. Make one of the go first, make a use IC with your one collect. <laughs> so, table this. That's table three. Table seven. Table twelve. So, you must make sure it enters those places. Do you know why? What he's looking for, they are there. Hear me? Serving God brings you to the realm of whatsoever you desire. Before you call, I will answer. While you are here speaking, I will perform. Serving God brings us to the realm. <laughs> now to the him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or what think. When you are serving God and you've entered that realm, as you are thinking the blessing, God is sending someone to bring the blessing. So can you now see what you are missing? By not giving yourself wholeheartedly. I've told us before, where you place God determines where he will place you. Where you place his house, where you place his kingdom, will determine where he will place you. So we determine our placement now. See thou a man diligent in his business. He says, shall not stand before me, men. But before what? Prince and kings. So I'm defining the people, that, the quality and the caliber of people that I will meet. I'm already defining it. I'm already defining it. I'm not at my best yet. I'm yet to get to the top. So you define it. You redefine your commitment because of where you want to reach. Where I am now may be good, but there is a place called better. I said there is a place called better. If you must reach the better place, you must prepare yourself to get to it. You must condition yourself, condition your lifestyle, condition your attitude. But hear this as we get up to pray in a short while. We don't just develop a kingdom lifestyle to serve, we must also make up our mind to serve God acceptably. Not all service are accepted. Some service, they are rejected. 
Romans 12 and verse 1. I beseech ye, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself. That you do what? Let's read that scripture in case you are with your Bible or in case you are with your phone or with your iPad. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? So if those conditions are not met, your service, they are unreasonable. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. So God must qualify our body before our service will be accepted. That's why somebody can finish fornicating and come and do praise worship. Uh -uh. I've been there now, so I know. They catch them where I remember one just came one day. <laughs> I, I was coming from downstairs. Oh. I was hearing the voice. He was singing. People were clapping. The Holy Ghost said, as you get there, drop her immediately. As, I, I didn't send paper. I just did like, come down before I push you down. She knew. So as she came down, I just called her, come, come, come. come. Where were you by one o'clock? <laughs> so after now, come and see me. Sit down. Where were you by one o'clock? I was not a pastor then. I was still brother. After service, she came and said, you just finished fornicating. And you still have boldness to go and carry the microphone. You won't die. So I said, from now, no singing for you. Go to prayer band. Go to prayer bound so that they will ban all the things that are inside you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So that they will do urgent deliverance for you. Some people, you know, some people can have malice in the same choir and still want to leave praise worship for us. You can't walk. If I regard iniquity in my heart. The Lord will not hear me. Anytime I stay from the office there, I say, go and tell this person to go down. Go and tell this person to go down. Eh? Something is wrong around that person. I may not be quick to know it immediately, but I will discover it very soon. It's as simple as that. Because you cannot be bringing a polluted sound Without somebody picking the signal. Somebody must pick your signal. Offer unto God a living sacrifice. My body is your sanctuary. My body is your sanctuary. Purify me like gold. So I might be bold to say my body is your sanctuary. So you must purify yourself. Are you know what I'm saying now? That's what scripture says. And he purified the sons of Levi so that they will offer unto him a reasonable sacrifice. He purified the sons of Levi. You purify the sons of Levi. There must be need for purification. Hear me? Purification is not what you assume. 
Some people think they are spiritual, but they are living carnal. No wonder scripture says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You are offering unto God unreasonable service. Service that does not go with a pay. Service that does not go with a reward, but with a punishment. You finish serving, punishment still follow you. That's why you must check it. You must check it. Can you not see the reasons why we have people in church, they are serving, but it looks as if they are winch, they do them. Do you know what is doing them? Unrepentant hearts. Scripture says, Godly sorrow bringeth about repentance. They are serving, but yet, no, not with the right heart. Serve with the right heart, you will miss your reward. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. If your service must be acceptable, please, I beg you, don't come and waste your time. Make up your mind to go for quality reward. One God say, what God said, don't do, don't do. What God said, don't do, don't do. If you know you have offended, go and ask for mercy. Go and ask for forgiveness. But some people will do boom face. The Holy Ghost say, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. They will still be speaking in tongues. He said, keep quiet. How can you confuse the Holy Ghost with tongues? And it's still hitting your conscience that what you did is bad. Do you know what? Before you know what is happening, you will become what we call reprobate. You do it without feeling anything. You enter the state of reprobate. Why? You are doing it. The Holy Ghost is warning you, but you are not giving heed to the warning. But let's look at the danger of being one and not being given heed to the warning. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. I'm rounding up now. I just have one more point to say and we can rise up to pray. Proverbs 1, verse 23. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my word to you. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and none, no man regarded. Verse 25. But you have set at naught all my counsel and will none of my reproof. Look at verse 26 now. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. The next verse, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a wild wind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, the next verse now, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. That's the danger of serving God with an unrepentant heart. Unrepentant heart. You'll be feeling, hear me? Including man of God, if you have offended God, go and ask for mercy. Don't say, I'm a man of God now, he understands. Understand what? You will go to hell with Emirate flight. Emirate first class. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? No wonder David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He said, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. He said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. If you must serve God and serve him acceptably, please, I beg you, go for reasonable service. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Where you have made mistake, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy on me. I want to be on the flight to the high place. I want to reach where quality people are reaching. I need a change in my life. And as you are doing this, you serve him willingly. You serve him tirelessly. You serve him faithfully. You serve him heartily. Rise up to your feet. I want to assure you, you will get there. Hear me? No one of you will miss his right place. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The place God has prepared for you, no one will take it from you. 
you are going to lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, whatever has been hindering the quality of my service, forgive me. I ask for your mercy. I've missed it here. I've missed it here. I need change today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and talk to God. Purge my heart with the blood of Jesus. Wherever I've missed it. By carelessness. Wherever I've missed it unconsciously. That is making me go unrewarded. Lord have mercy on me. Whatever is making my service not to produce the quality of result I desire. Lord have mercy on me. I cry out for your mercy. Show me mercy today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Show me mercy today. Show me mercy today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I ask for your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood, I rededicate my heart. By the blood of Jesus, I rededicate my heart. I rededicate my heart to serve you with the whole of my heart. To serve you heartily. To serve you choicefully. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. From today, you will not fall into the trap of the wicked. Amen. Whatever the enemy has been using to manipulate your service, that spell is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are ordained for the top, so you will not end up in the floor. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Every manipulating power negotiating your service, I decree they are utter manipulations scatter in the name of Jesus. From today, your heart will be panting after God. Say amen like a believer. From today, you will pursue God like never before. What you have not gotten in your lifetime through service, after this Easter camp meeting, it will begin to answer to you. He says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow thee. I guarantee you on this altar, from today, goodness and mercy will be pursuing you. Favor others are dying hard to get will be triply delivered into your hand. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Doors that have not opened for you before, they will begin to open on their own accord. I decree that the yoke of struggle be broken from your life. I decree that yoke of hardship be broken from your life. You will get to your topmost top. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting to my topmost top. I'm getting to my topmost top. And nothing can stop me. Congratulations. 